Hi everyone, Paul here. Today I'm going to talk about a strategy that helped me helped me pass the um, prop form challenge. Now I'm not officially passed yet. I think I got a day or two trades, but it, it's, it looks really good. Uh, but I do want to show you the formula that I personally used to kind of that helped me make some pretty good results from it. Uh, now you don't have to necessarily use this for the um, like a prop bird challenge. This is still a good strategy to use in general. Uh, it works good for Forex, which is what I'm going to show the example for today, but it also works good for crypto and the stock market. But uh, I'll probably show this for the stock market and crypto on a separate day, but today I just want to show uh, how you can use this for uh, doing it with uh, Forex particularly for those that are doing a challenge and uh, i find that it helps and if this strategy helps other people uh, help then that's good too uh, but if you guys want to use this strategy to pass your challenge you know i'm not responsible for any profit or loss this is just my method uh, it's just what i do but you know it may work for me it may not work for others so anyway if you want to use this uh strategy you can do use it on your own, but I'm not responsible for any profit or loss. But anyway, let me show you the strategy that uh, that has helped me. Okay, so this this is the setup that you would need if you're doing it with TradingView on a free account. So I, I made it very easy for you. Uh, you have your three indicators that you need, and the, if you want to do it on a free account, this is all you need. So first, you need your uh, your three smooth moving averages. Uh, I have it to 6 and 20, and I have it up here at the top, so 6 and 20 are the uh, moving averages. And then what you want to do is you want to go to Order Block Finder. Let me just remove this for No, I'm not going to remove it. Yeah, well, I'll show you. I don't need to show you this. You go to Order Block Finder, and there are some settings that you have to change. And this is probably the most important part. Order block finder right here. So once you get it on here, uh, now you could have all this on here if you want, but I I kind of I gotta get rid of a lot of the stuff like the uh, order blocks, the lines. I, I find that I don't really need it. If you guys want it on there, you can have it on there. I just find it just clutters up the screen. What you really need to do is just get it to where you have the you know the bullish the bullish order block symbol here that's all you really need so you just want to get rid of the lines so basically we just get rid of let's see which one is it everything here we keep we just get rid of all this everything here we just check off labels yeah especially the lines let's see how this is yeah so this is what you need so this is how you need to set it up all this gets checked and then you just uncheck all this because all this you really don't need these are the lines and all that stuff and this just gives color to the uh, indications make sure you check off labels and lines and it'll look like this you'll see what this basically does is it points out the moments when there's a bullish order block and it is it just erases the lines so and then uh, once you have that set up all you need is the relative strength index so there's really three ways of finding signals to get into a trade for forex and let's just use the japan dollar real quick First thing you want to look for is the moment when the 6 and 20 cross. You want to make sure you're looking at your your moving average and let's just let's just let's just hide the candles real quick. So, you want to look for the moments when it crosses. That's one point that's right here. So, I'm going to draw a, a line for every moment that it crosses just so that we're going to look at that crosses here uh, crosses there so we're going to check all these points Let's see crosses here crosses here 
just do a couple of them here. I can cross it here, right here. Is that crossing? That doesn't. That's not crossing all the way. Cross it in here, right there, and let's do two more. Crosses here, and one more crosses here. So the lines are all moments of where it crosses with the uh, 620 moving average. So that, turn on the candles. So if you just focus on getting in the moment that it crosses, you'll find some good results. So it starts right here, and let's just zoom out here. This is a big one. So if you focus on when it crosses, and we are on, this This is the six hour here. Uh, maybe I should have done this on the hour. Well, I'll, yeah, I should have done it on the, on the hour. But anyway, I'll use the six hour today, but just note that you, uh, you can do this for the hour, whatever time frame you want. But the longer the time frame, for this particular strategy, I'll do it for uh, the six hour, the one hour. Anything smaller than that, it's not really worth it because if it crosses, you're, you're just, you got to look at the charts more and uh, be more attention to it. And so you don't want to do that. You want to just set it. You want to be in a trade and just kind of sit back and you want to worry about it for a little bit but anyway this is the six hour so you can use the same thing for smaller time frames but i only use it for like the hour other other than the hour other than the six hour you use it for the hour but anyway if you want to use it for the hour use it for the hour but i'm just going to use this as an example here it, it crossed right here so this would have been a good time to get in now you also want to make sure you're looking at your rsi at the same time before you make a move uh, as a cross, you want to make sure it's crossing up on the RSI. You want to make, you want to look at the RSI and uh, confirm the, the, that it's going in that direction as well. So basically, when it crosses, you can come in right here and ride it out. And let's just say you rode this one out. This is one day, twelve hours. This is a two. Well, if you're, this is the uh, Japan against the U.S., so it's, uh, this one, if you, now I go an example of a 10, a $10 lot size, and so this is, this is what you would do to pass a challenge. Uh, anything smaller than like a $10 lot size is going to have a hard time passing, so if they, if they give you a funded challenge, let's say 25,000, uh, I do 10, uh, $10 lot size. Now that's me because if you think of a $10 lot size and this number right here is uh, 2,867. So that there, that move there is, I believe it's $28,670 if you did a $10 lot size. I could be wrong, but that's, that's what it would be. So let's look at a couple more times. Now, what you want to do in this situation is what you want to use the order block for. The order block is used for another, like, if you're waiting for it to cross again, like the, for the 6. If you're waiting for the 6 and 20 to cross again and you just want to find another signal of getting in. Because sometimes if you do it on the longer time longer time frames, you're, you're, you're going to have to wait a while. So, uh, what the... Um, the uh, order blocks can, can actually do for you is find signals in between uh, the 6 and 20 crossing. So what you want to do is you want to look at the trend. So right now what we can tell right here is that it, it's an uptrend. So we see that it's picking up a bearish trend right here. Now I personally, this would be going against the trend. I would not be going, I would not take any trades that's against the trend. You know the trend is going up. I would focus on finding a signal of it going up, which is this one right here. So this would have been the next one I got in. If I rode this one out here, I would have taken that trade. 
I wouldn't have taken the bull, uh, bearish one because it, this, it, this is going against the trend. So I would have gone in right here. This would have been my next entry right here, and I would have rode. You can basically ride this from order block to order block if you want, or you can just do it for a little bit if you want. So you can basically ride this. You can ride this from here to the next order block usually, and, or you can get out sooner than that. This is 10 days. I don't think anybody would want to ride it for 10 days. But if you did ride this for 10 days with a $10 lot size, this would be 47 thousand five hundred uh, in a gain here but you could you could get out here you can do it like for a day i think days or day a day here's a day right here if you wanted to do a day this would have been for a day it would have been uh see that's twelve thousand three hundred and thirty dollars i believe but if you rode this entire thing out you'll be looking at Forty-six thousand three hundred dollars. Uh, if you did a ten-dollar lot size, so let's look at again. So you could take the seed. Like I said, do not go against a trend. I would have taken. I would have taken that trade. I would have taken that trade, and I probably would have taken this trade right here, which would have been right here to here. This is uh, 10 days. Well, I would probably wouldn't have wrote it out that long, but 10 days, that is, uh, that is a 16,650 gain if you did a $10 lot size. But then you could, you could cut, cut it short by taking this trade to this trade, this trade to this trade, this trade to this trade. So it finds all those moments to take trades. So let's go back here and look at some of the other ones. So this one is a, you know, you got to look, there are these small little pumps here. You got to, now personally, you would look at this and be like, you could take it if you want. But this one is risky because, well, it's signaling the bullish trend, but the, the moving averages are going down. So uh, this is kind of a tricky move right here. That would be a best judgment here. That This could be where somebody loses. So this... Just keep your eye open. This 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 is not a perfect strategy, but it, you know it, it it will not count for those points when it drops down real quick and comes back up. You got to look out for that. You you got to look out for that for this kind of strategy. So that's that's kind of like the only thing you got to look out for is when when it drip uh, drops and comes back up again. So an example like this one right here, we see. We see bearish on the order block, but but the overall trend from the 6 and 20 is up. So I wouldn't take this trade because it would be going against the trend. So this one right here, let's go here to this back right here. This would have been a pretty good trade. It crosses right here. It crosses right here. You see the indication on the cross, you see a bearish signal, and you see that with the RSI. So this is signaling a pretty good trade. So if you came in and you rode this entire thing out, write it down here at the bottom. This in three and a half days, this is a, if you did a $10 lot size, this is a $53,470 gain this move right here so you can see the strategy is pretty powerful so let's see is that the last one i did is that the last one i think that was the last one i did so anyway that's probably all i'm going to explain today using this strategy yeah you can use this well it works for i use it for the japan dollar and uh i also use it for the australian dollar it's how i it's how I pretty much made my, passed my challenge or made pretty good results with my challenge. So anyway, if you guys like this strategy, if you want me to talk about it more, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in future videos.